grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. These words from the book of Acts. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. And then later on, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I think the day of Pentecost is a very difficult day to grasp. There's so much going on, it might be like looking for the forest and only seeing the trees. Or seeing the trees and not seeing the forest. Because there's so much happening. Let's just go back to that day of Pentecost. It's all listed there for when you're reading. I'm not going to read it to you again, but look at what is happening. Jerusalem is full of people, and it's full of Jews and the 11 disciples. They're outnumbered by thousands upon thousands. The day of Pentecost comes 50 days after the day of Passover. 50 days after Christ is crucified comes the day of Pentecost. It's the festival of first fruits in the sense that they have early and latter rains in Israel. So they're celebrating the harvest. Isn't it interesting that the disciples are still in Jerusalem and the Jews are showing up by the thousands? You've got to go back to chapter 1 to find out why. If you remember chapter 1, Jesus said, Remain in Jerusalem until you receive the Holy Spirit, and then you will be empowered to go out into the world and share the gospel. So you've got thousands of people. You've got people who think the disciples are drunk because you've got all these different languages being spoken, tongues of flame above their heads, and people cannot make sense out of it. Matter of fact, they think they're drunk. But later on, as we see this first sermon of Peter's, we find out they're not drunk. It's the work of the Holy Spirit, and they're speaking different language. Not just, uh, not just so people wouldn't understand like some people think, but they spoke in the language like missionaries speak today in Africa, India, China, Taiwan, all over the world, where people are given the gift of speaking in different languages. So I wonder, how can we make sense out of Pentecost for us today? The work of the Holy Spirit. I'd like to make it simple with three words. The church has its ups and its downs and its outs. And I want to contrast that, first of all, with the ups of the world. The world is so much different than the church. The world is so much different, but we've been accustomed to seeing things happen in the world around us. Go back to the Old Testament for a minute. <clears throat> Remember how the world, in chapter 11 of Genesis, how the world wanted to make its own tower to heavens? Where they wanted to be up as high as it could be. They didn't realize the higher we got, less oxygen. And God said, no, I'm not going to let you build a tower into the heavens. I am going to take all of you and spread you out. And there will be so many different languages, people won't be able to talk to each other until the day of Pentecost. you got to connect those two together. Consider that the world wants to prove God wrong. Or even worse, not relevant at all. I pray and hope today that all of you believe that God created the heavens and the earth. But if you don't believe that, you won't believe he created you. And you won't believe that Christ died for you. And you won't believe there is sin. And you won't believe there is heaven and there is hell. You see, there's something about the work of the Holy Spirit that believes us to believe that all those things that I just shared with you are true and not irrelevant. The world has its own religions. One of the religions that came about the time of Luther was the religion of humanism. And Luther said that we were kind of like agricultural farmers and we always looked down on the ground and prayed to God to give us crops up and down from God to you, you to God. And about the time of Luther, people started to look around and started looking at other people and talking about what's going on in the world around them. But what's happened now is that there's so much going on with humans that we begin to worship humanity and what humans do or don't do rather than what God does. Do you remember chapter 1 of Genesis? I hope you do. You probably heard about it in Sunday school. And God created them male and female. And now we've gone to a genderless society. No gender. Don't talk about gender. It doesn't make any difference anymore. What do you believe? Did God create us, male or female, or didn't he? How about this? Morality. We've gone from morality to an amoral society. Amoral to me really means it doesn't make a difference what you do, just as long as you don't bother me. The other day, just yesterday, I'm driving down the road and I'm 
I look at bumper stickers to see what they say. And this one caught my eye. Corporations, I'm trying to remember, corporations are not people. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Corporations are not people. I think maybe, if I'm not mistaken, Mississippi Line is property incorporated. It's not. Well, there goes that one, Glenn. I'll try another one. Okay. How about IBM? Is it a corporation? Probably. Are there people that work for IBM? Probably. You get the idea? <clears throat> I would state it this way for all of you who might have problems with corporations. Facebook is not a people. It's an app, isn't it? But what's on Facebook? People. And people share everything. And it goes viral. And it makes the news. How important was it this past week when a young man was sitting there eating his French pastry with his cat? <coughs> Thank God I got to see it. <laughs> I want to talk about irrelevant. A lot of what we see on Facebook or whatever it is, is irrelevant. People are becoming worshipers of small things. Five seconds of fame. And they get their ups from it. One of the biggest ups that I see in the world today is something you and I cannot control, but we're very concerned about, and that is heroin addiction. There is no town, no community, no county in our world, in our United States, that isn't affected by addiction. Let's get high. Can't stand what's going on around me. This world is tough. The answer is drugs. But then you get addicted. You understand what I'm talking about here? It's the difference of what's going on in the world and how God designed the world and why God had to pour out the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. When I thought about preaching a sermon, I was really concerned how do we get this idea across about the value of the Holy Spirit. At one time when I was in seminary, I said, if Luther came back to life, I think he would write a book on the Holy Spirit. Do you know we begin our service within the name of the Father and the Son and... The Holy Spirit. Something we don't see, but He's there. Remember what it was told in the Old Testament reading today? The Holy Spirit in the Old Testament was placed on certain people, but not spread out everywhere. On the day of Pentecost, the promise was that you and those be below you, the next generation, they will all prophesy. You know what that means to be a prophet? Two things. It means to speak forth to the people where you are and to speak about the future for you and the generations to come. Is Pastor Craig, when he gets here, is he going to be your only prophet? No. You'll be a prophet, and he is an educated prophet. But do you understand that each one of you have an opportunity and responsibility to prophesy? I'm not talking about dreams. I'm not talking about saying tomorrow the world's going to come to an end. It will someday, by the way. But you are to speak forth what you believe about God in some way. Or you to show other people what you believe about God by your actions. Someone said once, preach the gospel at all times if you have to, use words. How's your preaching going? That's the difference between the world and us. The birth of the church at Pentecost begins because Christ has gone up, ups, downs, and outs. <clears throat> Christ went up to the cross to pay the price for our sins and the sins of the world. Listen to Peter's sermon just for a moment. <clears throat> Fellow Israelites, listen to this. <clears throat> Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. And then he goes on to say, this man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan so that you might have forgiveness of sins. Can you imagine this for a minute? When those words were spoken, when Peter spoke, it was 50 days after Christ's crucifixion. Many of those people, thousands of those people had been there on Good Friday. They had witnessed Jesus being beaten. They had witnessed him crying out, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They had witnessed him being put in the grave. They had witnessed again on Easter is coming up being resurrected from the dead. And then just 10 days ago, ascension. Christ going to heaven. No, 
not on vacation, but sitting at the right hand of God in a position of power where he intercedes for you and I until the day when he returns. Don't, pick, don't miss Pentecost. Don't miss the full fulfillment of the spiritual presence then and now. There was a sound of a <clears throat> mild wind. There were tongues above the heads of the disciples. But go back for a minute. Go back to the Old Testament. Go back again to Moses and Elijah. Remember Moses? The one who received the Ten Commandments? Do you remember what happened when he received the Ten Commandments? There was a fire. The symbolism of the Holy Spirit at work came and he received the Ten Commandments from God himself. And how about Elijah? Do you remember the story of Elijah? He was a prophet. He spoke and it happened. And then Jezebel comes after him to get him killed. Elijah runs away. He says, I'm the only one left. And God comes to him. And he comes to him in a whirlwind. And he comes to him in fire. And he comes to him in earthquake. And then he comes to him in a small, still voice. Isn't it amazing? Just think for a minute. Who was it that was there on the Mount of Transfiguration? Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. And now we have the evidence of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. On Pentecost and thereafter, the Spirit empowers the church. The church goes up, the church comes down, and the church goes out. You would not be here today if it weren't for Pentecost and the power and the work of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit working through the Word convincing you of your sins, your need for a Savior, working through the baptism. Some of you have nothing to do with yourself except the Holy Spirit comes and blesses you, you have forgiveness of sins. Through prayer, think about that for a minute. There are times when you cannot talk to anyone else. There's no one else around, but you can always talk to God. And you pray for His intercession. One of my favorite verses would be, joyful always, pray continually, Give thanks and all circles. Who are you praying to? It's not Facebook. It's not a corporation. It's not a president. It's the one who is the most powerful in all eternity. How often have you prayed? I'm sure often. Realize the power of the work of the Holy Spirit when you pray. Christ intercedes for you. <coughs> and then the Holy Spirit works through fellowship. Do you know how encouraging it is to see you in church? Do you know who you're a witness to on Sunday morning when you come to worship? I'll, I'll take one. Me. I'll take another. Elders who are here. I'll take another. Others who haven't seen you for a little while. I'll take another. Anybody you know who's a member of this church family. Now why would we rejoice with that? Because we have a oneness in Jesus Christ. One of the most neat things for a pastor to do, and I know Pastor Craig will enjoy it, is giving communion. Giving communion to people who realize their need for forgiveness. And the joy of knowing that God goes to work. Some of you I baptized when you were in infants. Some of you I confirmed when you were older than dirt. That was you, John. Just like <laughs> but what a great joy it was to give John communion for the first time. And each and every time. What a joy it is when you see others who are now members of this congregation coming up to receive the forgiveness of sins. It empowers us to be the people of God that he wants us to be. The Holy Spirit causes us to go out in this sin-sick world. The third article of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Memorize that, I will. But where's the power coming from in the third article of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the work of the Holy Spirit. I believe that the Holy Christian Church is holy because of the Spirit working in us. You get the idea, don't you? The communion of saints here on earth and the communion of saints in heaven. We had a member here last week 
Her name was Norma. She's not here in the community of saints now, but she sure is in heaven. She's a member of something much larger than this than we could ever imagine. Someday we will also be there. We confess our need for Christ as we go out. We confess our need until he returns. We pray and seek his will. We pray and seek his small, still voice that he gives us. It is that Holy Spirit that comes and gives us peace in times of trial. It is the Holy Spirit that gives us courage to stand firm when assaulted for our beliefs. I love St. Paul's words in 1 Corinthians. I memorized it for myself. Remain immovable, steadfast. Give yourself work to the Lord, for his labor in his name is never in vain. Got that? As your witnesses for Christ, some word, some prayer, some evidence of your faith, remember it's never in vain because of the work of the Holy Spirit in you. Amen. <coughs> And now may the peace of God that passes all human understanding guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Life everlasting. Amen. You might enjoy seeing each other. That's great. Well, I don't know about you, but I like pictures. Do you like pictures? Come up really close. I want to show you a few pictures and see if you know who this is. Uh, who is that person? That's me. Very good. And who am I? Pastor Kirk. That's right. Let me see. Let's turn the page here. Who's this? Vicar, what's his name? I do not know. His name is Andrew. Let me see here. Oh, who's this? Anybody know who this is? That's Wayne. Yeah, Wayne's back there and not paying attention. Hi, Wayne. <coughs> oh, he was outside. That's okay. Let me see here. If I can see anybody else you might know. Let me see. I know there's got to be a few people here you might know. Oh, no. What's your name? Oh, you know any of these people there? You, your mom, and your dad, right? Cool, isn't it? So there's people in here that we have pictures of, that we know, and pictures that we don't know. Now, there's somebody else that I don't see in here, but I think you probably know who this is. Who's that? Jesus. How do you know that's Jesus? How do you know? His face is familiar, right? Yeah. You all know who this is? How do you know? Have you seen him? Good morning, Mac. I'm glad to see you. Late, but you're still here. Who is this, Mac? That's Jesus. That's right. And you know it's Jesus because somebody is teaching you about him. And there's also a statue there of him, right? But this morning there's somebody you can't see but he's here. It's called the Holy Spirit. Now watch. Just get ready. Close your eyes. I'm going to show you the Holy Spirit. Are you ready? Close your eyes. Ready? Close your eyes. Did you see him? Did you feel him? Yeah. Yeah. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down like a mighty wind. We don't see the Holy Spirit, but he's real. And he was there when each one of you were baptized and when each one of you were baptized. And it's the Holy Spirit that enables us to be the church. We're going to talk about that in the sermon this morning, but we're going to thank God for the Holy Spirit. Put out the fire? Well, not right now. Maybe when you get about... When you get to be old like me. Not just kidding. It's a little bit older, okay? Don't put out the fire today. You need it. Six. Maybe... Eight. You're six? You're kidding. I thought you were 13. I'm just kidding. Okay. Let's pray and give thanks to God for the work of the Holy Spirit, okay? So pray to me. Dear God, dear God, thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit. Continue to pour out your Holy Spirit on us. Amen.